Happy Sunday. Oh, how are you this morning? I did a lot of meditation this morning and I'm feeling really great. I hope you are as well. And it's a beautiful day. I'm going to move you a little closer to me. So excuse my readjusting. Here we are. I hope you're really taking care of yourself. You know, sometimes when we're moving um, and changing seasons, especially in spring, there's so much to do, right? We want to clean our houses. We want to get the yards going, plant things, all of it. And yet, um, there seems to be not enough time because we want to hurry up outside, go for walks, do whatever we got to do, that there's not enough time to take care of ourselves. And maybe we think that is taking care of ourselves by um, crossing things off the list. So take time, take time today to do something. One thing that's a self-care thing. Remember we did all those 21 days of self-care you can go back and look at them and see, what were my favorites? Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's taking a bubble bath. Maybe it's getting your petty done. Do something for yourself that just ignites you. I know I am going to today as we're halfway through the month. And before you know it, May will be here. May flowers, yay. So get your self or selves in order, your emotional body, your physical body, your spiritual body, your mental body, whatever you need to do that's calling to you for a little more self-care. Okay, so the first one is the mystical wisdom. This is my little... Um, whimsical deck as I call it. Oh no, I want this one. So for the week we have Dragonfly, live life to the fullest. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Live life to the fullest. So that reminds me exactly of what I was just saying, taking care of ourselves, but also being able to get outside. You can involve nature as a self-care as well sitting up next to a tree, going for a walk. That's self-care. So let's see. Let's see what this has to say. The dragonfly lives near water and represents the ability to be emotionally strong and flexible. It is one of the only creatures that can fly up, down, sideways, and backwards. Living your truest life is a responsibility. Do not let it be trivialized or lived superficially. The dragonfly is a symbol of knowing who you are and what you want. Make informed decisions and live life to the fullest without regrets. The mantra is, I am emotionally strong and live my life without regrets. That's a great way to live your life, right? That if something happened to you tomorrow... You are in a good place and no regrets. Next one is Messenger of Spirit, which this is my new favorite deck um, by Whitney McNeil. Again, digging for a certain card. Oh, we have Protector Guide. It's time to set boundaries with someone. Well, as all of you know from listening to me for years, that's one of my things, <coughs> boundaries. So maybe you can relate to this. Is there someone or something you need to say something to to set some boundaries? All right. It says spiritual help, boundaries and protection. Your protection guide is reminding you that you're always protected, but it's important to ask for help when you need it. Your guides are asking you to do your part to ensure the protection you need. 
asking for protection, and then immersing yourself in a situation that is unhealthy or unsafe is contradictory. An important part of protecting yourself is setting healthy boundaries in all areas of your life. This card is telling you that it's time to assert your boundaries with someone. Your heart and head might be conflicted. However, your intuition is never wrong. You already know that it's time to speak up for yourself. Say no when you need to and remove, remove yourself from unhealthy situations. Um, and it says the affirmation is I am protected and I have clear healthy boundaries. And a good uh, stone, it says, for that is black tourmaline, which we already, well, I already know that, that that's a good one to carry or for protection and all of that. All right, the next one is the Healing Waters from Rebecca Campbell. Ooh, very beautiful. The Water Oracle, Psychic Abilities, Acting on Visions, It's Destined. Look at how gorgeous that is. It looks like Mother Mary. As I look at this, I love it. She's holding what looks like to be a chalice of some kind. And this beautiful aura all around her almost looks like some kind of seashell with the um, spiral energy. It's very nice. And we think of water as the psychic energy as well. So let's see what this has to say. Okay. Water has long been associated with the feminine mystical arts, with seers, oracles, psychics using it to receive visions of the present and the future. Scrying is a mystical practice that's been used since ancient times all over the world. It's the art of gazing into something with a reflective sur surface, including water, to detect messages or visions. Oh, that's what it is. I wasn't sure if it really was a chalice. No, she's using something to look into the water. I don't know if you can see it clearly here. But this would be like you could use a crystal ball or a mirror or whatever. Um, and you look into it and you will, it takes practice, but you'll get images and things. The earliest documentation of scrying reaches back to ancient Babylonia. It's believed that the scryer would add oil or flour to a bowl of water and then read the resulting mixture to receive helpful visions. This divination practice is referred to as Lacan, I don't know how to say this, Lachenomancy, and it's a form of hydromancy, hydro meaning water. Wow, that's interesting. Add oil or flour to a bowl of water. Wow. I know we've done it with other things before. I taught in my um, year of magical teachings um, how to do it with flowers and stuff. They're talking about flour as in baking. Um, I'm talking about flowers as in growing flowers. When the water oracle appears before you, it's a sign that something is destined, written in the stars. Maybe you're living with a question at the moment, or perhaps you've received unexpected guidance to make a change in your life, but you're unsure whether it's your head or your heart talking. The water oracle delivers a message to trust your intuition and the messages and visions you've been receiving. It's a card of confirmation and encouragement to act on your visions and embody your intuition. 
It can also be a sign that your psyche, sorry, your psychic and intuitive abilities are growing stronger, that you have the gift of clear vision and are being encouraged to work on this craft more deeply. And the affirmation is, I trust my intuition and act on it with confidence. Wow, I like this one. It may even uh, make me pull it back out again. My, I have a beautiful crystal ball, you know, bringing it back out again to look at what's there. Practice. I'm not sure about adding the flower in the oil. That's intriguing to me. So if you feel so inclined to, do it. My next one is Magdalene Rose Oracle. And this one is still power. So look, it's in the darkness, still power. And to me, this is saying that being still has power. That's why we go to our medita meditations or just being quiet to connect or talking to God, goddess, whatever. That out of the void comes information. And boy, we're really being pushed for our practice this week. And it says she's called the Death Maiden, Still Power. I am the power of stillness and silence. I am Black Panther moving in and seamlessly between the worlds of form and formlessness. I am the gate guardian that bestows grace within the chaos of life. I am zero point. I am the place of no thingness. When everything else ceases and you are dropped into the dark cave where the death maiden lives. So if we think of death, we think of change, endings, all of that. And here we are. We just had that beautiful eclipse. I am Black Panther and I sit sentinel as you swallow deep wells of grief. Grief of all that has not been felt. Grief for all that has been, all that could have been all that should have been and all that never was. Boy, that is one heck of a sentence. I'm going to say it again. Grief for all that has been. So everything you've gone through, manifested, whatever, all that could have been, all your wishful thinking that never came to fruition, all that shouldn't have been, things you've pushed your will towards that came and all that never was. Swelling beneath the surface of your awareness, breaking through your heart and womb, meaning crying in release, shuddering through your body. I intimately weave grief and love, love and grief. I live in still moments, the silent moments where you can hear subtle movement. I can sometimes, I am sometimes wild, roaring, inconsolable sometimes i am barely seen yeah sometimes wild yeah i think back at my life a long time ago and how wild it was where i was really pushing everything and now it's different i am the still power from which raw truth emerges i am the absence of distraction i am the willingness to sit in no thing I am power in its most uncreated form. I am grief that makes love to life and life that gives way to grief. Receiving this card, re reclamation of your stillness. This card puts you on notice that it's time to reclaim your stillness. What needs to be grieved? There's something you've been avoiding feeling Perhaps the avoidance has come in the forms of addiction, escapism, or distraction. You're ready to feel all of it now. 
to release all of it now so you can become more fully alive. Yes, so before we can move forward, we have to look back and clear things out. There is something that wants to make itself known to you, yet this requires your stillness. There's beauty in grief, your grief, your losses, your abandonments. You know, it reminds me of one of the rune stones where you're standing, it talks about standing at the top of a mountain of a cliff and looking below at, you know, looking behind you at everything that you've created and reviewing it and feeling it before you take the leap into the new life. Anything you have not had the opportunity to fully release is here for you to feel now. As you do, you can claim them as precious black diamond pearls held within your tears. Allow them to fall upon your sweet cheeks, showing the depth of your soul, of your humanity. It's in this place that the divine rushes in, embracing you. Consider this. What will you release as black diamond pearl tears? Wow, that that I think had a lot of meaning. It did to me. I'm hoping it did to you. Wow, that was big. And now we're going to pull three of these lovely angel cards. And I'm not going to read from the book because they're big, huge, long definitions. I'm just going to sum it up. Balance. So that's pretty clear. I think it's a good time to find balance <clears throat> in our lives. Divine guidance. One of the wild cards in the deck. Divine guidance. Spirit is watching over you, your loved ones, your angels, your team. Ah, how about that? There's two in the deck and we got both of them. So how I'm taking this, I almost feel like these cards come in order today for some reason. So I feel like live the life to the fullest, you know, start to get out there, take care of yourself, explore, but you've got to set boundaries. Maybe the boundaries are with yourself. Maybe you don't think you deserve time to for self-care and everything. Maybe the boundaries are with self. So think about that. Set up your boundaries. Then develop your intuition, right? The oracle. Then be still. Be still so you can listen. Then bring the balance back in. And I'm seeing this as the sky's the limit. God, spirit, your loved ones, your team, they already know what you want. So once you go into that still power and you listen, you get clearer on what's most important for you. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mwah! I'm going to leave you with that. Have a powerful week. Try scrying. What do you got to lose? You can just put water in some crystal bowl and look in it. Try it. Bye-bye.